don't push early, no need to crank, just ensure that these athletes stay healthy and safe throughout this whole process. All right, I've had a lot of questions about uh, ACL progressions, return to sport, uh, how quickly do you push them, uh, how conservative are you, and here's an easy framework to be able to include with pretty much any athlete, and that's a framework. So I, I think if you take away a few things, uh, number one is don't push early, no need to crank, just ensure that these athletes stay healthy and safe throughout this whole process. So let's review this. So if we're talking about an ACL, and this can also be applied to uh, shoulder post-ops, slap repairs, whatever it is. But in general, before you go, you know, fancy plyometrics, uh, exercises that you see on Instagram or YouTube, just understand the framework and then you can insert whatever you want throughout that process. So if we're gonna, a post-op uh, zero to two, we know this is primarily healing, just don't mess them up, work on the range of motion. So uh, we're gonna go range uh, healing plus range of motion. That's your primary focus. So, you know, no need to get too aggressive. Um, work on just making sure they don't get inflamed and they don't have any re-aggravation of uh, their healing process. So number two, work on the range and start getting some neuromuscular control. So from two to six, work on extension, work on flexion, no need to crank in either direction, just make sure you don't flare them up. At that point, you can still work on a little bit of neuromuscular control, uh, take it easy, just get some quad activation, some glute activation, core, pelvic control, a little bit of everything else. As you transition to that next healing phase, let's draw a line here, and we go six to 12. Yes, you're progressing neuromuscular control, but you're also prepping them for the next phase, which is gonna be plyos. So in that strength phase, this is where you can start to change your parameters. So if we know here, you know, you're working on range of motion, and neuromuscular control, think about your rep scheme and your parameters. Here we're not working on strength, we can go high reps and just get quality of range of motion. So you can go 10 times every hour, you can go 20 times, you know, five times a day. Just thinking, you're thinking volume because you're thinking about reps, you're not doing a lot of strength, there's no resistance, it's just frequency. Okay. So as you go into neuromuscular control and working on strength, this is where you can uh, play with your strength principles. So here we can be talking about you know three sets of eight, five sets of eight, and you know if you're going to start looking at neuromuscular control, you can do it in the 15s. But you're talking about strength, that's where you can actually change it. So if you're working on neuromuscular control, three by 15, start changing up rep schemes when you're working on the strength cycle. So as you go in, depending on your protocol, some people will start running or basic running progressions at week 12, 14, 15. So that's where you're progressing and finalizing any strength gains, but then also introducing some plyos. So what you have to do there is make sure your volume is relatively low. So if you're gonna do some plyos, you can do five by threes because it's all about qualities. Um, and the strength, you can still be doing three, four sets of eight. Um, and then as you progress in those plyos, just making sure that just like this early healing phase with every new start of a new phase, that you're not having aggravation of any of the symptoms, any swelling, whatever it is. So as you move on, now you're at, uh, let's see here, four months, four to six months, uh, you're now uh, primarily focusing on those plyos and return to sport. Just make sure, an easy tip that I give the team, that as you progress into plyos that you don't do around more than 150 to 200 uh, total reps of plyos just to get people uh, started. And then as they get in return to sport, so this was pretty much, your, you're primarily focusing on linear based plyos and depending on their sport. So on plyos at week, you know, four to six months, you can start to look at not just linear, but now you're doing lateral, and a touch of multi-directional work, uh, and then return to sport uh, criteria, obviously non-contact, and they're probably gonna have a brace on depending on your surgeon. Uh, and then as you get into that six month protocol, now you're definitely advancing multi-directional work, uh, so and lateral work. But then here you might be introducing contact, real light contact, uh, depending on your uh, surgeon and uh, how aggressive that protocol is. And then when you finally get out to nine months, you know that you're doing modified contact and then a little bit of unrestricted uh, work towards uh, final freedom towards that one year mark. And here's what I would say. As you go on to get people out to a one year, most of the time you'll see at that one year mark, people will give you this number. So 90 to 
99 percent 99, 90 to 99% improvement. And that's at that one year mark. And what I see people is at 0.5 years or two years. So at one year, they get 90 to 99%. At 1.5, they're at like 99.9. .9. And a lot of times at the two year mark, I hear that 100%. So understand your progressions. There is no need to try and expedite this. Understand that there are base principles to understanding what needs to happen early. If they don't achieve that range of motion, they can't, adva can't advance to too far into that neuromuscular control. If they don't advance in their plyos, they can't even advance to return to sport. If they don't return to sport, they can't get contact. So each one of these, there's two things that need to happen. There's time-based uh, criterion. So at week two, four, six, eight, 18, 24, 36, that's time-based and then there's criterion. So criterion is you have to have full range. Yes, we all know this, but understand that next step depends on what they can begin. If they can't, if they don't have the range in terminal knee extension, it doesn't make sense that you actually start terminal knee extension quad sets, you know? So uh, they have to each have each criteria as they move forward. Where the trouble becomes is where at three months, at the three month mark, this block right here, where typically, we would either you know lose them to maybe an insurance claim um, or they come at, can come as frequent a lot of times this is the most important and this is where you're going to have more most of the strength gains and the confidence and so those plow progressions they need to be consistent with those and those have to be two to three times a week as they start and then entering in you know to five times a week of actual con ground contacts to ensure that they're going to be returning to sport and now when you start adding in contact you have to make sure that you, you add in multiple versions of contact, anticipated and unanticipated contact, because that's where they're gonna have the most trouble. And testing usually is at that six month mark, you're gonna do return to sport testing, nine month mark, and the 12 month mark. At that time point, those are criterion based and they're time based, and then don't forget to uh, compare that with their subjective response, which should be greater than 90%. If all of those markers hit and you have success with your timelines and they've hit the criteria and they have subjective uh, response over 90%, you're in a really good place. That At that point, you know that you've done a great rehab. Uh, you know, subjectively, they feel good. Criterion, they actually feel good. And we know that the surgeon would know by which timeline they want to have certain markers. So uh, when you put that all together, that puts a really good uh, recipe for success. So uh, I hope that helps you out. And this is a ACL guideline, obviously, but this can be uh, the same with, you know, shoulders or low backs, whatever it is, you can still do the same thing. So uh, apply it to your rehab and then uh, let me know if you have any questions.